Hey, this is another video by Pet Rock, and today I'm working on my wife's 98 Ford Mustang. And the driver's side power window motor has pretty much given up the ghost. Uh, if I press the button, nothing happens. Except for if I hold the button down long enough, the power and ground wires, which is the yellow and the white and black one going into the switch, uh, get pretty hot, which means there's a whole bunch of excessive current flowing through them. Uh, and that's an indication of a bad motor. So today I'm going to remove the window regulator and swap out the electric motor for one that I picked up at a junkyard. This is exactly the same procedure sans swapping the motor out that you would use if you were going to replace the window regulator itself. There are companies that make the window motor itself separate from the window regulator. So just check around and you should be able to find just the motor if that's all that's wrong with your window regulator. And that'll probably save you like 30 to 40 bucks. So I went the even cheaper route and pulled a motor from a window regulator off of a junk car at the local junkyard. So the first step is obviously to take off the door panel. I had already done this uh, but did it off camera uh, just because I was trying to diagnose what was originally going wrong and I just didn't film it, sorry. So this video is going to start with what you do after you've removed the door panel. When trying to test this, make sure that you have this little box thing plugged in. It's hidden inside the door panel itself. This is the power window one touch down switch thing. So when you press the down button, the window goes all the way down just from one touch. That is what this thing does. But it is also in between the switch and the window motor. So without this plugged in, the window motor is not going to work, period, no matter what you try to do. So make sure you have this thing plugged in when you're trying to test your window. This thing is mounted inside your door panel. It's mounted kind of like this inside the door panel where this is what you see. To remove it, you snake your finger underneath and you push down on this tab. It'll release a little hinge right there that you can then pull down on it to uh, um, remove it from its bracket. So according to the service manual, you can remove just the window motor without having to remove the entire window regulator and the window and all that other garbage. However, there isn't very much room to work in there in order to get the window motor out and then get the new one back in and have it slide into the gears. Not to mention that I have pretty thick arms and I don't want to cut them all up inside of here and stuff like that while trying to wiggle my arm in there to seat and unseat the motor. But if you want to try it, you can and here's pretty much the procedure. You want to loosen the two mounting bolts for the motor side of the window regulator just to give yourself a little bit of wiggle room. You can't really see it with the light but there are bolts here, here and here that are the mounting bolts for the window regulator motor to the window regulator. It's a tongue twister. So you undo those uh, three bolts. Uh, you may need to push the window regulator outward a little bit to get a little bit of clearance in order to remove the motor because the motor needs to slide towards you in order to uh, disconnect itself. Then you just disconnect this electrical connection here, snake it through and uh, pull it out put the new one in, slide it back into place, and uh, tighten everything back up again. That's essentially it. However, again, as I said, with my uh, physical attributes, it's going to be easier for me just to remove the window regulator and uh, swap out the motor. The first thing you need to do is remove this weather stripping here. Just pry up on it, and it'll pop right out. Next, you have to remove the window stabilizer supports. There's one right here and another one right here. These are 11 millimeter bolts. You just unbolt it and then these will pop down. If your window is in the full up position like mine is, you might find that these stabilizers are hooked into a little hook right there that's part of the window. You can try to wiggle them out. Um, they are in a little compartment in here so there's not much side to side room, but don't worry about it. When we actually lower things down, these will just fall out. The bracket looks like this. This part slides against the window. That's why it's made of felt. Next you need to remove this bolt here and this bolt in there, hidden in there. They are the bolts that hold the brackets that prevent, right here, 
that prevent the window from going too high. And this bracket looks like this. You know, it's the rubber part. This is what touches against the bottom metal bracket of the window, preventing the window from going up too far. Next, you need to remove this weather stripping. There is a rivet right back in here that you should be able to pop out. There's a hole for it right where my finger is. Mine was removed years ago, so there is no rivet in this case. All I need to do is just pick up on, the, uh, on it and it'll come out. It's held in place by compression. Be careful as you're removing the weather stripping and make sure you don't bend it. If you bend it, then it won't fit right, it won't come back on, and it'll also look really bad. So we need to separate the window from the window regulator itself. There are two brackets on the uh, front and back side of the window that are attached to a horizontal bar similar to this one. From the factory, they're riveted on. If your window's ever been replaced, then yours may be on, held on by bolts, uh, nuts and bolts. Uh, mine has been replaced a long time ago, so I'm, I don't have to worry about rivets. However, if yours does have rivets and you don't want to remove them, you do have a way of removing the window regulator without popping the rivets. This is the bracket I got from the junkyard uh, just to show for this video. So the window attaches here and here, windows up here somewhere, to the window regulator. This bracket slides back and forth as you raise the window up and down. There are little metal tabs right there that is normally sticking straight up, which prevents this slide from going too far. The rivet isn't that tall. If you manage to get a screwdriver in here and bend this tab so that it's flat, you can slide the window off the track once you have the window regulator free in order to remove the window from the window regulator. Of course, this means you need to unbolt the window regulator from the door first. I'm just showing you different options right now. Choose to go the route of drilling out the rivets. It's actually really simple. You just take a small drift punch and punch out the center shaft in the rivet. Then once you do that, you take a, a quarter inch drill bit and just drill off the head of the rivet and you're done. Just make sure that you don't let the window drop when the uh, rivet pops. The bracket on the window should have a little ledge on it that is uh, clinging to the top of this so it shouldn't pop off. However, if you push the window back too far, it will. So just keep track of the window and don't let it uh, fall. You can either replace the rivets with quarter inch blind hole rivets or use a set of quarter inch dash 20 by one half inch long hex head bolts with matching nuts, readily available at any auto parts store. The thread pitch on the bolt really doesn't matter. It's the length of a half inch and the diameter of a quarter inch that matters. So you don't have any clearance problems as you're raising and lowering the window. Also so that the bolt fully seats within this hole. You tighten down the nut and bolt to 89 to 123 inch pounds. So now we start removing the fasteners for the window regulator. So you've got one here, 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 and here. And then you have one here and one here. So a total of six bolts. They're all 11 millimeter. This bracket, you just push the bracket out like that and then slide it off of the track here and remove it. Now you need to remove the connector if you haven't already for the one touch switch. You just pull up on this tab and pull back. Then you need to disconnect the connector for the window motor. Like that. Then you use a pair of screwdrivers or a tool similar to this that you can pick up at most auto parts stores and remove the connector from the door panel. It's held on by these little plastic things here. Then you push that through the door panel. Good, now the fun begins. Now, regardless of whether your window is up or down or in the middle somewhere, this can be a little tricky. We need to push the window regulator that way in order to release it from these two studs right here. When that happens, the window may drop. So you want to either hold on to it yourself or have a buddy hold on to it. So in my case, I'm going to use my left hand to hold the window, pull up a little bit on it to release some of the pressure on the motor on these bolts and push through like that. Now the window is free. To give yourself enough access and to lower the window down into the right area. You want to raise the window up and slide the regulator back. Then you can stick a piece of wood, like a 2x4, inside the door in order to hold it up. So about a 1 foot 2x4 right here 
we'll get the rivets, bolts, or whatever lined up perfectly with this hole right here. Just remove the nuts and bolts, or drill out the fasteners, or slide the uh, window regulator forward in order to slide it off the bracket and ultimately free the window up. Okay, once you have the window free, straight up and out. Okay, once the window's out or you have a friend holding it up out of the way, you can remove the window regulator. And there's your prize. So I have the window regulator out. This is the one we just removed from the car. This is the one I got at the uh, local junkyard. In my case, I'm just going to be swapping the motors out because this window regulator is damaged. As you can see, it's all bent up out of shape. This car was in a side impact and so the window got messed up. But the window motor itself is in perfectly good shape. I've already tested it. I know it works. Anyway, so we're just going to swap these two out. So all we do is just remove the three mounting bolts from each one. One thing to keep in mind when you're removing these bolts, this thing right here is a giant spring and is applying pressure this way onto this arm right here. So once you remove this motor, that spring is gonna try to snap closed and catch whatever's in its way along with it. So be careful when on doing this because it is spring loaded. The reason for this spring is so that if the gears in here des uh, decide to let go, it will push the window in the up position. So the failure, uh, failure mode for this thing is window up. So to protect yourself, take a small screwdriver and stick it in the bottom hole. That screwdriver won't hold the arm in place. What it'll do is it'll prevent it from going all the way closed. It'll stop it about here or so and probably bend your screwdriver in the process. Um, but it's better than catching your hand or hitting your face or whatever. So as you're removing them, make sure to apply pressure this way on the arm and remove the bolts. And because I have the screwdriver in, it's only going up that far. So now take a little bit of chassis grease and put it all around the gear of your new to you motor. Okay, now take your new to you motor, press down on the arm, and slide this pin, the tip of the motor, into, put the hole right there, making sure that it catches on these cogs. Okay, once you got it in, Make sure you keep pressure on it and start a couple through a couple bolts. Not letting go of it until you actually put all the bolts in. A couple threads. So just snug the bolts down. Also make sure that while you were doing this, you didn't by accident bend the shaft. Now we go back over to the car. Whether you're installing a new regulator or an old one or a used one or whatever, you want to lube this track right here on this side as well as the corresponding one on that side just to give it a little bit of added smoothness as you're driving down. What I use is white lithium grease. You can pick this up in most auto parts stores. Just Give it a nice, uh, nice coat on both sides. What white lithium grease will do is it's, uh, it'll stick to this area right here and won't wipe off very easily. Now what I also like to do is lube up this track right here. And the corresponding one that goes right here. This just makes the window slide a little bit easier. Uh, and the easier the window slides, the faster it'll move and the less chance you'll have of burning out your motor. You'll also want to get the window tracks that are on this side here and this side here. Uh, they're a little bit harder to get to, but you can still, you can do it. So now you want to place the window regulator in this position and slide it back in. Once you have it in, you want to raise it up and get those studs into these holes right here. Once you've got one in, you want to start a nut on it so that it doesn't pull back out again as you're still wrestling with the top one or the other one. Loosely start both nuts. So you push the motor towards, the, towards you, 
thread the bolts by hand first and tighten them down the rest of the way. Just snug them down, there really is no torque spec. Now once you have room, you snake your hand through here and snake the power cord for the motor up through this hole right here. So now you want to slide this bracket into its place, but make sure that it catches on this plastic on the end of the runner. Then loosely tighten the bolts. Just snug them down. Okay, now that you've got the window regulator mounted and everything's set, you want to test the window regulator, but you also need to make sure that the top bracket is in line with these two holes right here so you can remount the window. Now if you're working on your driver's door, you need to plug back in this uh, blue box thing to um, get your window to work again. As I said earlier, this is in between the window switch and the window motor, so without this, the circuit is broken and the window motor won't get power. Then you plug the window motor back in, put your key in the ignition, put it in an auxiliary, ignore the beeping, and then test the window. So now you want to lower it such that the holes in the bracket line up with these holes in here. Like that. Now you take the key out of the ignition, unplug the motor, unplug the one touch switch to, so you don't damage it while you're working on it. And now we're going to reinstall the window. Okay, there are three brackets on the bottom of the window. One, two, and three. This is the front of the window and this is the back of the window. This needs to slide into the rail on the back of the door. This you don't have to worry about for now. This needs to slide into the front rail at the front of the door. This is the mounting hole for where your screw is going to go so it mounts onto the window regulator. This is a little tab that you can rest the window on on top of the window regulator as you're trying to locate the hole. And same with over here. There's also a tab on the top here too. And right there is the channel on the back of the door that you need to have the little disc on the back of the window slide into. Right there is the corresponding one on the front that you need the front bracket on the window to slide into. Okay, you want to slide the window in, nose first, catching it into the groove on the front, as well as the groove on the front here, and then you want to make sure that the disc slides into the rail in the back, and then you want to locate the tabs on the window onto the rail on the window regulator. So now the window is in place. You don't want to jostle it too much in this point because you can make it slide off the window regulator and then fall down and break and do all sorts of weird damage. So chances are you're not going to have the hole in the window mount match up with the bracket itself. If you notice you can see the hole but it's lined up with the uh, wrong location. So you just need to slide it left or right to fit where you need it to be like that. Then you want to slide your bolt in through, sorry if I'm wobbling, but in through the back. Then take a washer and nut and put it on a couple threads. You don't want to tighten it down now because we need to also put a nut and bolt on the front and the front uh, doesn't have any wiggle room. Well we have a little bit here where we can move the bracket back and forth just a little bit in order to line up with the holes in the front. Okay, one trick to get a washer on that bolt is to put a washer on the end of a magnet, then snake it into place. Like that. And pop the magnet off. Then to put the nut on, you put the nut inside of a shallow socket, which will hold the nut in place, and then just snake that through and screw it on. And then you do the same thing on the front. Once you have the front and the back nuts and bolts on, you torque them down to 89 to 123 inch pounds. What I like to do is cut that in half and that would make it 106 inch pounds. Because these things are holding the window on and they're, going, and they're pushing a good amount of weight up and down all the time, you want to make sure these are torqued down properly. Don't guess and just snug them down. You want to get them uh, to the right spec. So the bump stops, or the brackets that prevent the window from going too high, they install via that little hook on the top into the little hole, Let's see if I can get it right there. So you want the, that hook to slide into the top of that, that T and then slide down and then the bolt goes in that hole right there. Push the window that way, 
slide it in, get it in the top of the T, and let it slide down. Then you take the bolt and snake it through and just loosely tighten it down. You're not going to tighten it down all the way yet. Then you do the same thing on the one on the back of the back of the door. Next you have these brackets which prevent the window from moving backwards and forwards. You want this felt part facing towards the window and this part up. This little notch right here goes into this little slot right here and that's where the bolt goes. So you slide these in through the hole right here, push the window forward until you get it clicked in and then you put the bolt in. Again, finger tight. Then you do the same thing on the back of the window. Next you need to reinstall the outer weather stripping. Just slide it forward. It hooks into under right underneath the mirror. And then push press down on it. So now you need to install the inner weather stripping. You press it up against this part right here. Next you need to adjust these brackets to ensure that the window closes properly and seals around the weather stripping around the top of your window. I'll be covering that under a separate video because it's worth noting how to do it uh, because there's various reasons why you need to uh, readjust your window. For example, after you replace the window or replace the weather stripping or put a new top on your convertible or various other reasons. Um, so it's worth its own video. So I hope this video helped you out. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comments section below. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up button. If you want to see more videos like it, please subscribe.